Dear, when will you wake? When will you open up your eyes? Keep going. Betty, dear, Betty, please. Betty. Betty, wake, please. Betty. Susanna Walcott is here from Dr. Griggs. Oh, send her in, send her in. Come in, Susanna. Oh. What does the doctor say, child? He bid me come tell you, Reverend Sir, that he cannot discover no medicine for it in his book. Then he must search on. Aye, sir. He been searching his book since he left you, but he bid me tell you you might want to look towards <sighs> unnatural causes. No. No. There be no unnatural practice here. Tell him I have sent for Reverend Hale of Beverly. Mr. Hale will surely confirm that. Aye, sir, he bid me tell you. Speak nothing of it in the village, Susanna. Go directly home and speak nothing of unusual practices. Aye, sir, I pray for her. <sighs> Uncle, the rumor of witchcraft is all about. Why do you not go down and deny it yourself? The parlor's packed with people. I'll sit with her. And what will I tell them? Then my daughter on my niece I discovered dancing like heathen in the forest. We did dance, uncle. Let you tell them I confessed it and I'll be whipped if I must be. But they're speaking of witchcraft. Betty's not witch. Child, I cannot go before the congregation when I know you have not opened with me. What were you doing out there in the forest? We did dance, uncle. And when you leaped out of the bush so suddenly, she was frightened and fainted. And there's the whole of it. Child! I would never hurt Betty. 
I love her dearly! Child, your punishment will come in its time. But if you trafficked with spirits in the forest, I must know, for my enemies will, and they will ruin me for it. We never conjured spirits. Then why can she not move since midnight? This child is desperate! Abigail, do you understand that I have many enemies? I have heard of it, sir. There is a faction that is sworn to drive me from my pulpit. Do you understand this? I think so. Now why, in the midst of such disruption, does my house become the center of some unnatural practice abominations? It was sport, uncle! You call this sport? Abigail, if you know something that may help the doctor, for God's sake, tell me! I saw Tichiba waving her arms over the fire when I came on you. She sings her Parpedo songs and we dance! I cannot blink what I saw, for my enemies will not blink it. I believe I saw a dress lying in the grass. A dress? Aye, and I thought I saw someone naked running no through the trees. No one was naked! You mistake yourself, uncle! <sighs> Abigail. I hope you feel the weight of truth upon you, for my ministry's at stake. My ministry, and perhaps your cousin's life. I have opened with you. I have told you everything. Abigail, your name in the village is entirely white, is it not? Why, I'm sure it is. There be no blush about my name. Abigail, is there any reason other than what you have disclosed for your being discharged from Goody Proctor's service? <laughs> She hates me, she must, for I would not be her slave. It is a bitter woman, a lying, cold, sniveling woman. She may be, and yet it troubles me they that you- They want slaves, not such as I. Let them send to Barbados for that. Do you begrudge my bed, uncle? No, no. My name is good in the village. I will not have it said that my name is soiled. Goody Proctor is a gossiping liar. <sighs> It is a marvel. It is surely a stroke of hell upon you. What's out, Goody Putnam? What are you? How high did she fly? How high? No, no, she never flew. Why, it's sure she did. Mr. Collins saw her go over Ingersoll's barn and come down light as a bird, he says. Goody Putnam, you're surely mistaken. Providence. The thing is out now. It is a providence. What's out, sir? What are you? Why? Her eyes are closed. Look, you, Anne. <sighs> Tis strange. Ours is open. Your Ruth is sick? I'd not call it sick. The devil's touch is much heavier than sick. It's death, you know. It's death driving into them forked and hooked. Oh, pray not. Why? How does Ruth ail? She ails as she must. She never waked this morning, but her eyes open and she walks. She hears not, sees not, and cannot eat. Her soul is taken, surely. They say you sent for Reverend Hale Beverly? A precaution only. He has much knowledge of all the demonic arts, and I imagine that sending He has him... indeed. And he found a witch in Beverly just last year, and let you remember that. Now look, Goody Putnam, they only thought they found a witch there. We have no knowledge of any witches here. No witchcraft. Now look, you Mr. Paris. Thomas. Thomas. Pray you, we cannot leap to witchcraft. We, we cannot leap to witchcraft. They will howl me out of Salem for such corruption in my ranks. Anne, tell Mr. Paris what you have done. Reverend Paris, I have laid seven babies unbaptized in this earth. And believe me, sir, you never saw more hearty babies born. And yet, on the very night of their birth, each would wither in my arms. And now this year, my Ruth, my only, I see her turn in strange, so I thought I'd send her to your Tituba. To Tituba? Why? What may Tituba? Tituba knows how to speak to the dead, Mr. Paris. Goody Anne, it is a formidable sin to conjure up the dead. I take it on my soul, but who else may surely tell me what person murdered my baby? Woman! They were murdered, Mr. Paris. And mark this for a sign, mark it. Last night, my Ruth were ever so close to their spirits, and I know it, sir. Don't you understand it, sir? There is a murdering witch among us, Bonnie. Keep herself in the dark. Then you were conjuring spirits last night. Not I, sir. Tituba and Ruth. Oh, goody Anne. What proper payment for my charity? Now I am undone. No, 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 no. You are not undone. Let you take hold here. Wait for no one to charge you. Declare to yourself. You have discovered witchcraft. In my house? In my house, Thomas, they will topple me with this. They will make it of an unknown practice. Your pardons. I only thought to see how Betty is. Why aren't you home? Come here, child. Come here. 
Who's with Ruth? Her grandma come. She's improved a little, I think. She gave a powerful sneeze before. Ah, oh, there's a sign of life. I'd fear no more, Goody Putnam. It were a grand sneeze. Another like it will shake her wits together, I'm sure. Will you leave me now, Thomas? I pray a while alone. Now look you, sir. Let you strike out against the devil, and the village will surely bless you for it. Come down, come down. Speak with them, pray with them. They're thirsting for your word, mister. I'll lead them in a psalm, but let them speak in nothing of witchcraft yet. I'll not yet discuss it. The cause is yet unknown. Mercy, you go home to Ruth, do you hear? I, ma'am. If she runs for the window, cry for me at once. I will, uncle. There is a terrible power in her arms today. How is Ruth sick? It's weirdish, I know not. She seems to walk like a dead one since last night. <laughs> Betty, Betty stop this, Betty wake up now! Have you tried beating her? I gave Ruth a good one and it seemed to wake her for a minute. Here, let me help. No, no, he'll be coming up soon. Listen, if they be questioning us, admit to the dancing. I've already told him as much already. Aye, and what more? He knows that Tichibo was conjuring Ruth's dead sisters. And what more? He saw you naked. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what do we do? The village is out. I've just come from the farms. The country's talking witchcraft. They be calling us witches, Abby. She means to tell. I know it. We've got to tell. Which are you hanging? A hanging there. Just like they done two years ago in Boston. We'll only be whipped for dancing and other things. But we'll be whipped. I've never done none of it. I only looked. Oh, you're a great one for looking, aren't you, Mary? Warren. Stop. Betty! <laughs> Betty, it's me, Abigail. Betty, dear, what is it? Mm. I'll beat you, Betty! Stop this! Oh, my mama! What ails you? Your mama is dead and buried. Betty! <laughs> Never speak you that. You think you drank a charm to kill John Proctor's life? You drank a charm to stop this! Stop it, Betty! You will never speak of that again! Abby, what's gone? <laughs> I've seen it done it, Harry Warren! <laughs> oh, Mr. Proctor, I'm just going home now. Be you foolish, Mary Warren. Be you deaf. I forbid you leave the house, did I not? Oh, I just come to see the great doings in the world, sir. I'll show you a great doing on your arse one of these days. Now get you home. My wife's waiting with your work. Oh, Mr. Proctor, she just fell off the cot. I'd best be off. I have my Ruth to watch. Good morning. Vanessa, got stuck in my scarf. I almost fell. I almost forgot how strong you are, John Proctor. What's this mischief here? She's only gone a little silly somehow. The road past my house is a pilgrimage to Salem all morning. The whole town's mumbling witchcraft. We were dancing in the woods and my uncle leaped in on us. She just took a fright. You're wicked yet, aren't ye? You? You'll be clapped in the stocks before you're even twenty. Give me a word, John. A soft word. No. No, Abby, that is done with. You come five miles to see a silly girl fly? I know you better. I come for to see what mischief your uncle is brewing now. You'll put it out of mind, Abby. John, I'm waiting for you every night. Abby, I never give you hope to wait for me. I have something better than hope, I think. Abby, you will put it out of mind. I will not be coming for you more. You're surely sporting with me. Oh. But you know me better. I know how you clutched my back and sweated like a stallion whenever I come near her. Did I dream that? It she put me out. You cannot pretend it were you. I saw your face when she put me out. You loved me then and you do now. Abby, that's a wild thing to say. A wild thing may say wild things. But not so wild, I think. 
I have seen you since you put me out. I have seen you nights. I have hardly stepped off my farm this seven months. I have a sense for heat, John, and yours has drawn me to my window. Mm. I have seen you looking up, burning in your loneliness. Do you tell me you've never looked up at my window? I may have looked up. I know you, John. I know you. I cannot sleep for dreaming. I cannot dream, but I wake and walk about the house as though I'd find you. Child! Mm. How do you call me child? Abby, I may reach for you from time to time, but I will sooner cut off my hand before I do it again. You will put it out of mind. We never touch. I, but we did. I, but we did not. Oh, I marvel how such a strong man may be led by such a sickly you wife. You will not mention Elizabeth. She is blackening my name in the village. She is telling lies about me. Do you look for a weapon? I look for John Proctor, who took me from my sleep and put light in my eyes. I never knew what pretense Salem was. I never knew the lying lessons I was told by these Christian women. And now you bid me tear the light from my eyes. I cannot. I will not. You loved me, John Proctor, no matter what sin it is, and you love me yet! Well, what ails you? Betty! What's this wailing? Betty! What, what did you do to her? Betty! Betty, dear Betty! She heard you singing, and now she's up and screaming! Come in, come in! Betty. The psalm, the psalm, she cannot bear to hear the Lord Betty. sing! Oh, pray not! Mercy, fetch the doctor! Mark this for a sign, mark it! Betty! <laughs> It is a notorious sign of witchcraft to put goody nurse, a prodigious sign. My mother told me that when they cannot bear to hear the name of the Lord. Rebecca, Rebecca, we're lost. She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. There is hard sickness in here, Giles Corey, so please keep the quiet. I have not said a word. No one here can testify I've said a word. Is she going to fly? Man, be quiet now. <laughs> What have you done? What do you make of it, Rebecca? Goody nurse, will you go to my child and see if you can wake her? I think she'll wake in time. Pray, calm yourselves. I have 11 children and I am 26 times a grandma and I have seen them all through their silly seasons. And trust me when I say they will run the devil bow-legged keeping up with their mischief. I think she'll wake when she tires of it. A child's spirit is like a child. You cannot catch it by running after it. You must stand still and pray for love. It will soon itself come back. Aye, that's the truth of it, Rebecca. Rebecca, this is no silly season. Rebecca, my child is bewildered. She cannot eat. Perhaps she is not yet hungered. I hope you are not decided to go in search of loose spirits, Mr. Paris. I've heard promise of that outside. A wide opinion is running in the parish that the devil may be among us. Then let you come out and call them wrong. Did you consult the wardens before you called this minister to look for your devils? He is not coming to look for devils. Then what's he coming for? There be children dying in the village, mister. I see none dying. I am sick of meetings. Cannot the man turn his head without he have a meeting? He may turn his head, but not to hell. Pray, John, be calm. Mr. Paris, I think you'd best send Reverend Hale back as soon as he come. This will set us all to argue and again in the society, and we thought to have peace this year. Rebecca, the doctor is baffled. If so he is, then let us go to God for the cause of it. There is prodigious danger in the seeking of loose spirits. Let us rather blame... Let us blame ourselves. How may we blame ourselves? And yet I have but one child left of eight, and now she shrivels. I cannot fathom that. But I must. You think it's God's work that you should never lose a child, nor grandchild either, and I bury all but one? There are wheels within wheels in this village, and fires within fires. Mr. Paris, when Reverend Hill comes, you will proceed to look for signs of You do not command, Mr. Paris. We vote by name in the society, not by acreage. I never heard you worried so on this society, Mr. Proctor. I do not think I heard you sell you at Sabbath meeting since no blue. I have trouble enough without I come five mile to hear this man preach only hellfire and bloody damnation. Mm. Take it to heart, Mr. Paris. There are many others who stay away from the church all because you hardly ever mention God. It's quite true. There are many that quail to bring their children. Rebecca, I do not preach for children. It is not the children that are unmindful of their obligation towards my ministry. Are there really those unmindful? I would say the better half of Salem Village. And more than that. I want a mark of confidence is all. I am your third preacher in seven years. I do not wish to be put out like the cat whenever some majority feels the whim. I...
There is either an obedience so the church will burn like hell is burning. Can we speak one minute without we land in hell? I am sick of hell. It is not for you to say what is good for you to hear. I may speak my heart, I think. What are we, Quakers? We're not Quakers here yet, John Proctor. You may tell that to your followers. My followers? I, I am not blind, Proctor. There's a faction in this village. A party and a faction. Against you. Against him and all authority. Why then? I must find it and join it. He, he does not mean that. He confessed it now, Rebecca. I mean it solemnly. I like not the smell of this authority. No. You cannot break charity with your minister. You are another kind, John. Clasp his hand. Make your peace. Giles, what say you? He says there's a party. Let's find the party. It suggests to the mind what the trouble be among us all these years. Think on it. Wherefore is everybody suing everybody else? Think on it now. It's a deep thing and dark as a pit. I have been six time in court this year. Pray you, someone take these. Oh, Mr. Hale, it's so good to see you again. Oh, my, they're heavy. They must be. They are weighted with authority. Oh, well, you do come prepared. We shall need hard study if it comes to tracking the old boy. Excuse me, you cannot be Rebecca Nurse. I am, sir. Do you know me? We have all heard of your great charities in Beverly. Do you know this fine gentleman? Mr. Thomas Putnam and his good wife, Anne. Putnam! I had not expected such distinguished company, sir. It does not seem to help us today, Mr. Hale. We look to you to come to our house and save our child. Your child ails too. Her soul, her soul seems flown away. She cannot eat, sir. Cannot eat? Do you men have afflicted children as no. well? No, no. <laughs> these, these are farmers. John Proctor. You don't believe in witches. I never spoke on witches one way or another. Will you come, Giles? No, no, John. I think not. I've heard you to be a sensible man, Mr. Hale. I would hope you'd leave some of it in Salem. Mm -hmm. Will you look at my daughter, sir? We discovered her this morning out on the high road, waving her arms as though she'd try to fly. Tries to fly? She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name, sir. That is surely a sign of witchcraft. No, no. Now let me instruct you. We cannot look to superstition in this. The devil is precise. The marks of his presence are definite as stone. And I must tell you all that I shall not proceed unless you are, t you are prepared to believe me. Shall I find no bruise of hell upon her? It is agreed, sir. We will abide by your judgment. Good, then. Now, sir, what were your first warning of this strangeness? Why, sir, I discovered my daughter and my niece Abigail and ten or twelve of the other children dancing in the forest. You permit dancing? No, no, it were secret. Mr. Paris's slave has knowledge of conjuring, sir. You cannot be sure of that, Goody Anne. I know it, sir. I sent my child. She should learn from Tichaba who murdered her sister. Goody Anne, you sent a child to conjure up the dead. Mm -hmm. Let God blame me, not you. Not you, Rebecca. I'll not have you blaming me anymore. Is it a natural work to lose seven children before they live a day? Seven dead in childbirth. I. What book's that, sir? What's there, sir? This. This is all the invisible world. Caught, calculated, and defined. In these books, the devil stands stripped of all his brute disguises. Here are your familiar spirits, your incubi and succubi, your witches that go by land, by air, and by sea, your wizards of the night and of the day. Will it harm the child, sir? I cannot tell. If she is truly in the devil's grip, we may have to rip and tear to get her free. I think I'll go then. I am too old for this. Why, Rebecca, we may open up the boil of all our troubles today. Let us hope so. I go to God for you, sir. Surely you don't, do not mean we go to Satan here. I wish I knew. Come, Mr. Hale, please, let's get on. Now mark me. If the devil is truly in her, you will witness some frightful wonders in this room. So please, keep your wits about you. Mr. Putnam, stand close in case she flies. You as well, Mr. Paris. Now, Betty, dear, will you sit up? Can you hear me? I am John Hale, minister of Beverly. I have come to help you, dear. Do you remember my two girls in Beverly? How can it be the devil? Why would he choose my house to strike? Mr. Paris, 
What victory would the devil have to win a soul that is already bad? It is the best the devil wants, and who better than the minister? That's deep, Mr. Paris. Deep, deep. Betty, Betty, answer Mr. Hale. Betty, please. <laughs> Does someone afflict you, child? Child! <laughs> <laughs> In nomine sabawath ite ad infernos. Abigail, what sort of dancing were you doing with her in the forest last night? Why, common dancing is all. I, I do believe it, I should say, I saw a kettle in the grass where they were dancing. That were only soup. What sort of soup were in the kettle, Abigail? White beans and lentils, I think. Mr. Paris, did you not notice any living things inside the kettle? A frog, perhaps, or a mouse or spider? I do believe I, I saw some movement in the soup. That jumped in. We never put that in. What jumped in? Why, a little frog jumped. Abigail, it may be your cousin is dying. Did you call the devil last night? I never called him! Tituba! Tituba! Tituba called the devil? I should like to speak with this Tituba. Goody Ann, can you fetch her? How did she call him? I know not. She spoke Barbados. Did you feel a strangeness when she called him? A sudden cold wind, perhaps? I never saw the devil. Betty! <laughs> Betty, please wake up, Betty! You cannot evade me, Abigail. Did your cousin drink the kettle last night? She never drank it. Did you drink from it? No, sir. Did Tituba ask you to drink it? She tried, but I refused. Why are you concealing? Have you sold yourself to Lucifer? I never sold myself. I'm a good girl. I'm a proper girl. No, no. She made me do it. She made Betty do it. Happy. She makes me drink blood. Blood? My baby's blood? Oh no, chicken blood. I give you chicken blood. Woman, have you enlisted these children for the devil? I don't talk with no devil. Why can she not wake? I, Are you silencing this child? I, I love me, Betty. You have sent your soul upon this child, have you not? No. Are you gathering souls for the no. devil? She sends her spirit on me in church. She makes me laugh at prayer. You beg me to conjure. She beg me to make Don't her. Lie. Sometimes I wake in the open doorway without a stitch on my body. I always hear her laughing in my sleep. She's always making me dream corruptions. She's tempting me with everything. Why you say that, Abby? Tetuba, enough. I want you to wake this child. Mr. Reverend, I have no power over this child. You most certainly do. And you will free her from it now. When did you compact with the devil? I don't compact with no devil! You will confess yourself, or I will take you out there and whip you to your death. This woman you should be hanged. She should be taken and hanged! No, no, no! Don't hang the to her! I, I, I tell him I don't desire to work for him. The devil? You saw him then? I saw. I do believe that someone else be witching these children. Who? I don't know, sir. The devil. He, he got him numerous witches. Tituba, look into my eyes. You be a good Christian woman, would you not? I saw a good Christian woman. And you love these children, Tituba? Yes, sir. I don't desire to hurt the little children. And you love God, Tituba? I, I love God with all my being. Now in his holy name. Oh, bless him. Bless him. And to his eternal glory. Eternal glory. Bless him. Bless God! Open yourself, Tituba. Open yourself and let God's holy light shine on you. Oh, bless the Lord! When the devil comes to you, does he come with someone else? Someone in the village, someone you know. Who came with him, Tituba? Was it Sarah Good? Did you see Sarah Good with the devil? Was it man or woman come with him? Man, woman, it, it was woman. Woman, woman, you say, what woman? I, it, was, it was black, dark, and, and I... You could see him, why could you not see her? Well, they were always, always talking and running around and carrying You mean around. out of Salem, Salem witches. I, I sir, I, I believe so. Tituba, you have confessed yourself to witchcraft, and that speaks a true wish to come to heaven's side. Oh. And we will bless you, Tejiba. Oh, bless you, Mr. Hale. You are God's instrument placed in our hands to discover the devil's agents among us. Oh, oh God, protect Tejiba. Who came with you to, who came to you with the devil? Two, three, four, how many? Their names, Tejiba, their names. Uh, there was four, there was four. Their names. Oh, Mr. Paris, many times he bid me to kill you. Kill me. I sir, he say, Mr. Paris, mean, mean man. Mr. Paris, no goodly man. Many times he bid me to raise out of my bed and cut your throat. 
cut my throat. Hi. And then one stormy night, he come to me. He say, I did you my look. I have white woman belonging to me. And I looked, and there was Goody Good. Sarah Good. Hi, sir. And Goody Osborne, too. I knew it. Goody Osborne were midwife to me three times, and I begged you, Thomas, did I not? I begged you not to call for her. I begged him not to call for her because I feared her. My baby, so I shriveled in her arms. Take courage, Tichiba. You must give us all their names. Mm. How can you bear to see her suffering? My pity. Look at her, Tichiba. Look at her God-given innocence. Her soul is so fragile. We must help her. I want to open myself. I want the light of God. I want the sweet love of Jesus. I dance for the devil. I wrote in his book. I go back to God now. I kiss his hands. I saw Sarah Good with the devil. I saw Goody Osborne with the devil. I saw George Jesus with the devil. I saw Martha Pellis with the devil. She speaks, she speaks. Glory to God, they are free. I saw Goody Booth with the devil. I saw Sarah with the devil. I saw Goody Marshall. Pepper with the devil. Oh, the marshal. Let the marshal bring irons, Mr. Putnam. I saw Goody Booth with the devil. <laughs> So late, it's almost dark. I were planting far out to the forest edge. So you're done then? Aye. The farm is seeded. The boys asleep? They will be soon. Ah, pray now for a fair summer. Aye. Are you well today? I am. I mean to please you, Elizabeth. I know it, John. I think you are sad again. Are you? You were gone so long I thought you'd gone to Salem this afternoon. Why? I have no business in Salem. You did speak of going earlier this week. I thought better of it since. Mary Warren's there today. Why'd you let her? You heard me forbid her go to Salem anymore. I couldn't stop her, John. It is a fault. It is a fault, Elizabeth. You're the mistress here, not Mary Warren. She frightened all my strength away. How may that mouse frighten you, Elizabeth? Oh, it is a mouse no more. I forbid her go and she raise up her chin at me like the daughter of a prince and says, I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor. I am an official of the court. Court? What court? Hi, it is a proper court they have now. Four judges they've sent out of Boston and at the head sits the deputy governor of the province. Why, she's mad. I would go to God she were. There be 14 people in the jail now, she says. And they'll be tried. And the court have power to hang them, she says. Ah, uh, they'd never hang. The deputy governor promised hanging if they'll not confess, John. The town's gone wild, I think. She speak of Abigail, and I thought you were a saint to hear her. Oh, it is a black mischief. I think you must go to Salem, John. I think so. You must tell them it is a fraud. Aye, it is. It is, surely. Let you go to Ezekiel Cheever. He knows you well. And tell him what she said to you in your uncle's house last week. She said it had not to do with witchcraft, did she not? Aye, she did. She did. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think they must be told. Aye, they must. They must. I would go to Salem now, John. Let you go tonight. I will think on it. You cannot keep it, I John. know I cannot keep it. I say I will think on it. Good. <sighs> then let you think on it. I am only wondering how I may prove what she told me, Elizabeth. If Abigail is a saint now, I think it is not easy to prove she's a fraud. And the town has gone so silly. <sighs> she told it to me in a room alone. I have no proof for it. You were alone with her? For a moment alone, I. 
Why, then it is not as you told me. For a moment, I say. The others come in soon after. To as you wish, John. Woman, I will have your suspicion. I have no suspicion. I say I will not have it. Then let you not earn it. Do you doubt me still? I see what I see, John. Spare me. You forget nothing and you forgive nothing. I have gone tiptoe in this house all seven months since she is gone. John, you are not open with me. You said you were in a crowd with I me I say I will not have it. John, I am only... I'll not have it. I should have roared you down when you first told me your suspicion. But I wilted and like a Christian, I confessed. I confessed. But you look sometimes for the goodness in me and judge me not. I do not judge you, John. The magistrate sits in your heart that judges you. I only thought you but a good man. Only somewhat bewildered. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, your justice would freeze beer. Why do you leave this house when I forbid it? Do you mock me? I will whip you if you dare leave this house again. I am sick, I am sick. Mr. Proctor, pray, pray, hurt me not. And what of these proceedings here? When will you proceed to keep this house as you are paid nine pound a year to do? I made a gift for you today, Goody Proctor. I had to sit in chair for long hours and pass the time with sewing. Well, I think you married as a fair puppet. We must now love each other. I Goody Proctor. Indeed we must. I wake up early in the morning and clean the house. I must sleep now. Mary! Is it true? There be 14 women arrested? No, sir. There be 39 now. 39? What ails you, child? Goody Osborne will hang! Hang? Hang, you say? Aye, sir. The deputy governor will permit it. He sentenced her. He must. But not Sarah Good. Sarah Good confessed, you see. Confessed? To what? That she... She sometimes compact with Lucifer. But surely you know what jabberer she is. Mr. Proctor, in open court, she nearly choked us all to death. How choked you? She sent her spirit out. Mary, surely you don't believe she did that. She tried to kill me many times, Goody Proctor. Why, you never mentioned that before. I didn't know before. I never knew anything before. And all of a sudden, I hear a voice. A screaming voice, or my voice. I remembered everything she'd done to me. Why? What did she do to you? Mr. Proctor, she come to this very door, begging bread, a cup of cider. Every time I turned her away, she mumbled. Mumbled? She may mumble if she's hungry. Aye, but what does she mumble? Don't you remember? Last month, a Monday, she come to this very door and I thought my guts, my guts would burst for two days straight. I think I do, Mary, but I don't. And that's why I told Judge Hathorn. And she says, Sarah Good, what curse do you put on this child? She falls sick after turning you away. She says, why, I say my commandments. Must I say my commandments? And that's an upright answer. But Judge Hawthorne says, recite for us your commandments. And she knew not a single one. She never knew no commandments. And so condemned her? Why, she condemned herself. But the proof, the proof. I told you the proof. It's hard. Hard as rock. You will not go to that court again, Mary Warren. I will be gone every day now. I'm surprised you not see the weighty work we do. Work you do? It is strange work for a Christian girl to hang old women. They will not hang if they confess. Sarah Good will only sit in jail for some time. And here's a wonder. Goody Good is pregnant. Pregnant? Are they mad? The woman's near to 60. Aye. But it's God's work we do. You must see it. So I'll be gone every day now. I'm an official of the court. I'll official you. I won't stand women no more. Mary, just promise you'll stay at home now, please. The devil's loose in Salem. We must discover where he's hiding. I'll whip the devil out of you. I saved her life today. I am accused, somewhat mentioned. Who accused me? I am bound by law, I cannot tell it. Go to bed, Mary Warren. I will be not ordered to bed, no more. I am a woman at 18, however single. Do you wish to sit up? Then sit up! I wish to go to bed. Good night, then. Good night. <laughs> the noose, the noose is up, John. Elizabeth, there will be no noose. I knew all week it would come to this. She wants me dead. They dismissed it. You heard Mary Warren say that yourself. And what of tomorrow? She will cry me out until they take me. Sit you down, Elizabeth. She wants me dead, John. You know it. Now we must be wise. Oh, indeed, indeed. Fear nothing. I will find Ezekiel Cheever. I will tell him Abigail John, said it. with so many in jail, I think more than Cheever's help is needed now. Would you favor me this? Go to Abigail. What have I to say to Abigail? 
John, grant me this. You have a faulty understanding of young girls. There is a promise made in any bed. What promise? Folk or silent, a promise and surely made. And she may dote on it now, and I am sure she does, and thinks to kill me than to take my place. There be a thousand names, John. Why does she call mine? She thinks to take my place. Please. Oh, oh. Good evening. Why, Mr. Hale? Good evening, sir. Come in, come in. You are Goodwife Proctor. Aye, Elizabeth. I hope you are not off the bed just yet. No, no. Will you sit, sir? I will. Let you sit, Goodwife Proctor. I will not be here long, but I have some business with the both of you. Business of the court? No, no. I come on my own, without the court's authority. I know not if you are aware, but your wife's name was mentioned today in court. We are aware, sir. Our Mary Warren told us, and we are entirely amazed. As you know, I am a stranger in these parts, and so I find it hard to draw a clear opinion of them that come accused. And so today, and now tonight, I go from house to house. I come now from Rebecca Nurse's house. Rebecca's charged. God forbid such a woman be charged. She is, however, mentioned someone. Surely you do not believe Rebecca trafficked with the devil. Woman, it is possible. You cannot think so. This is a strange time, mister. Man may no longer doubt that the forces of darkness lay gathered in monstrous attack upon this village. There is too much evidence to deny it now. You will agree, sir. I have no knowledge in that line. Aye, but the devil is a wily one. That you cannot deny, sir. I thought to put, some to put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you'll permit me. We have no fear of questions, sir. In the book of records that Mr. Paris keeps, I note that you are rarely in church on Sabbath day. No, sir. You are mistaken. Twenty-six time in seventeen months? I must call that rare, sir. Tell me, why is it you are so absent? Mr. Hale, I never knew I must account to that man whether I stay at home or come to church. My wife was sick this winter. So I am told, but you, sir, why could you not come alone? I, I surely did when I could. And when I could not, I prayed in this very home. Mr. Proctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. What's your suspicion, Mr. Hale? No, no, I have no I suspicion. nailed the roof upon the church. I hung the door. You did? That's a good sign, then. Aye. It may be I've been too quick to put the man to book, but surely you cannot think we ever desired the destruction of religion. There is a softness in your record, sir. A softness. I think we have been too hard with Mr. Paris. I think so. But surely we never loved the devil here, sir. Do you know your commandments, Elizabeth? I surely do. And you, mister? I'm sure I do. Let you repeat them, if you will. The commandments? Aye. Thou... Thou shalt not kill. Aye. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, nor take unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not take unto thee any graven image. You have said that twice, sir. Aye, aye. Adultery, John. Aye. You see, sir, between the two of us, we do know them all. Theology, Mr. Proctor, is a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted too small. Sir, we have no love for Satan in this house. I pray it. I pray it dearly, sir. Well then, I, I must be off. I'll bid you both good night then. Mr. Hale, I do believe you are suspecting me somewhat, are you not? Goody Proctor, I do not judge you. My duties add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. Good night, sir. I think you must tell him, John. What's that? Will you tell him? I cannot prove it, except my word be taken, sir. But I know the girl's sickness had not to do with witchcraft. Not to do with witchcraft? Abigail and the girls were dancing in the woods. Mr. Paris discovered them. They were startled, and they took fright. And who told you this? 
Abigail Williams herself. Abigail Williams told you it had not to do with witchcraft. She told me the day you came, sir. Why did you keep this? I knew not until tonight that the world had gone so daft with this nonsense. Nonsense? I myself examined Tituba, Sarah Good, and numerous others that confessed to dealing with the devil. They confessed it. And why shouldn't they? If they will hang, if they deny it. And you will testify this in open court. I am not considered going to the court, but if I must, I will. Do you falter here, I sir? falter nothing. But... I may wonder if my story will be credited in such a court. Now, Proctor, be open with me, for I have a rumor that troubles me. It is said that you have no belief that there are witches in the world. Is that true, sir? I know not what I have said. I may have said it. Then you do not believe. I believe in the Bible. The Bible speaks of witches, and I will not deny them. And you, woman? I, I cannot believe it. You cannot? Elizabeth, you bewilder him. If they say I am one, then I say there are none. Woman, surely you do not fly against the gospel. She believes in every word of the gospel. Every word. Question Abigail Williams of the gospel, sir, not myself. Sir, she means not to doubt the gospel. This is a Christian house, a Christian house. John. Giles, what's the matter? They take my wife. And here's Rebecca. Rebecca's in the jail. Hi. Come. Sheever, come and take her in his wagon. We've only now come from the jail, and they'll not even let us in to see them. They've surely gone wild now, Mr. Hale. Reverend Hale, can you not speak of this to the deputy governor? I'm sure he mistakes these people. Pray, calm yourself, Mr. Nurse. My wife is the very brick and mortar of the church, Mr. Hale. How were Rebecca charged, Mr. Nurse? For murder she's charged. For the marvelous and supernatural murder of Goody Putnam's babies. Nurse, though our hearts break, we cannot flinch. There is a misty plot afoot, so subtle we should be criminal to hang to old respects and ancient friendships. The devil is alive and well in Salem. How may such a godly woman murder children? Man, remember, until an hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful in heaven. I never said my wife were a witch, Mr. Hale. I only said she were reading books. Good evening to you, Proctor. Why, Mr. Cheever, good evening. Good evening to all. Good evening, Mr. Hale. Good evening. I hope you come not on business of the court, Mr. Cheever. I do, Proctor. I am clerk of the court now, you know. It's a pity, Ezekiel, that an honest tailor might have gone to heaven must burn in hell. You'll burn for this, do you know it? You yourself know I must do as I'm told. You surely know it, Giles. I tell you, I like not the sound of it. I have a warrant for your wife. My, you said she were not charged. I knew nothing of it. Cheever, when were she charged? I am given 16 warrant tonight, and she is one. Who charged her? Why did Abigail Williams charge her? On what proof? Mr. Proctor, I have little time. The court bid me search your house, and I like not to search a house. So will you hand me any poppets your wife may keep here? Poppets? I have kept no poppets, sir, not since I were a girl. Eric. I spy a puppet, Goody Proctor. Why, that is Mary's, Mary's puppet. Do you keep any others in the house? No, nor this one either till tonight. What signifies a puppet? Why, a puppet? Uh, they say a puppet may signify that. Now, woman, will you come too with me? She most certainly will not. No, I'm forbid to leave her from my sight. You will leave her out of sight and out of mind for a moment. Fetch Mary here, Elizabeth. Mr. Cheever, what signifies a puppet, <clears throat> sir? Well, they say that a, a puppet, a puppet may signify that she. Oh, why, why this, this. What's there? Why, why, why it's a needle. Herrick, oh, Herrick, it's a needle. And what signifies a needle? Why, uh, the, the, the girl, the Williams girl, Abigail Williams, sir. She sat to dinner in Reverend Paris's house tonight, and without word or warning, she falls to the floor. And he rushes to save her, and stuck two inches deep in the flesh of her belly, he pulled a needle out. And demanding of her how she'd come to be so stabbed, she, she testified that it were your wife's familiar spirit that pushed it in. Why, she's lying. She did it herself. Sir, you cannot be taking this for proof. Uh, tis heart proof. I have found here a puppet that Goody Proctor keeps. I found it, sir, and in the belly of the puppet a needle is stuck. I tell you truly, I never warranted to see such proof of hell. I bid you obstruct me not, for I... Here now, Mary Warren, 
tell this man how this poppet came into my house. What poppet's that, sir? This poppet! This poppet! I believe it is, sir. I... It is your poppet, is it not? It is, sir. What have you now? Mary Warren, a needle were found inside this poppet tonight. Why, I meant no harm by it, sir. You stuck the needle in yourself? I did, sir. I... What say you now? Child, you are certain this is your natural memory. Could it be that someone is conjuring you to say even this? Conjure me? Why, I'm entirely myself, I think. Ask Susanna Walcott. She saw me sewing it. Ask Abby. Abby. She sat right next to me while I was sewing it. Bid him be gone, Reverend. Your mind is surely settled now. Bid him out. What signifies a needle, sir? Mary Warren, you charge a cold and cruel murder on Abigail. Murder? I charge no murder. Abigail were found stabbed tonight. A needle found stuck into her belly. And she charges me? Aye. John, this girl is a murder! She must be ripped out of the world! Ripped out of the world? You heard it? Herrick, you heard it? Out with you! Out with you now! Proctor, you dare not touch the warrant! Damn the warrant! Damn the deputy governor out of my house! Proctor! Proctor, enough! Get ye gone with them! You are a broken minister! Proctor, the court is- This warrant is a vengeance! I will not give my wife to vengeance! I'll go, John. You, you cannot go. I have nine men outside. You cannot keep her. The law binds me, John. I cannot budge. Will you see her taken? If she is truly innocent, Proctor, she will... God will not let you wash your hands of this. I think I must go, John. Fear nothing. I will bring you home. I will bring you soon. I will fear nothing. Tell the children I've gone to visit someone sick. Cheever, don't chain her! Cheever! And yet silent, minister! It is fraud! You know it is fraud! What keeps you, man? In God's name, John, I cannot help myself. I must chain them all. Mr. Proctor, out of my sight! Charity, Proctor, charity! What I have heard in her favor, I will not fear to testify! You are a coward! So you be ordained in God's own tears. You are a coward now! God help me, I cannot judge her guilty or innocent. I shall pray that God opened up your eyes to this. John, are we lost? Giles, go home now. We will think on it tomorrow. Let you think on it. Stop. We'll come early, eh? Aye. Go home now, Giles. And you, Francis. Mr. Proctor, very likely she'll come home soon once given proper evidence. You're coming with me to the court, Mary. You will tell it in the court. I cannot charge murder on Abigail. You will tell the court how that poppet came into my house and who stuck the needle in. She'll kill me for saying that. She'll charge lechery on you. She told you? I have known it. She'll ruin you. I know she will. Good. Then we will slither into our pit together. Make your peace. We will tell the court. I cannot do it. They'll turn on me. My wife will not die for me, Mary Warren. I will bring your guts into your mouth, but that goodness will not die for me. I cannot do it. I cannot do it! Hands off me, damn you! Let me go! Giles! Giles! Out of my way, Herrick. I bring evidence. You cannot go in there, Giles. It is a court. Herrick, be calm a moment, sir. You, Mr. Hale, go in there and demand I speak. Mr. Corey, sir, a moment, please. A They'll moment. They'll be hanging my wife. How do you dare come ruining to this court? Are you gonna daft, Corey? You're not a Boston judge yet, Hathorne. You'll not call me daft. Who is this man? Uh, Giles Corey, sir. No more content. I am asked the question, and I am old enough to answer it. <laughs> my name is Corey, sir. <laughs> Giles Corey. And it's my wife you be condemning now. And how do you suppose to help her cause with such contemptuous riots? They be telling lies about my wife, sir. Do you take it upon yourself to determine what this court shall believe and what it shall set aside? Your Excellency, I mean no disrespect. Disrespect indeed. It is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme government of this province. Do you know it? Your Honor, I only said my wife were reading books, and they come and take a fruit. Books? What books? Hey, Your Excellency, he claims hard evidence in his wife's defense. I think that in all justice, we must... Then let him submit his evidence in proper affidavit. I am certain you are aware of our procedures here, Mr. Hale. Uh, Mr. Herrick, clear this room. Come along, Giles. We are desperate, sir. We come here three days now and cannot be heard. Who is this? Francis Nurse, Your Excellency. His wife, Rebecca, were condemned this morning, sir. Indeed. I'm surprised to see you in such uproar, Mr. Nurse. 
I have nothing but good reports of your character. I think they must both be a rat in contempt, We'll sir. let you write your plea, and in due time I will certainly- Your Excellency, we have proof for your eyes! God forbid you shut them to it! The girls, sir, the girls are frauds! What's that? We have proof of it, sir, they're all deceiving this you! This contempt, sir, contempt! Peace, Judge Hathorn. Do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? I surely do, sir, and I think you must be a wise judge to be what you are. And are you aware that you're to 400 are in the jails from Marblehead to Lynn I, and on my signature? I... And 72 condemned to hang by your, that signature? Your Excellency, I never thought to say it to such a weighty judge, but you are deceived! Mm. <laughs> Mary Warren, what are you about here? She would speak with the Deputy Governor. Mm. Had you not told me Mary Warren was sick in bed? She were, Your Honor. When I go to fetch her to court last week, she said she was sick. Your Honor, she comes now to tell the truth of this to you. Who is this? John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, Your Excellency. This man is mischief. I think you must hear the girl, sir. She... Pray. Mary Warren, what would you tell us? She would say she never saw no spirits. Never saw no spirits? Never. Mr. Danforth. Mary Warren has signed a deposition. No, no, I take no depositions. Have you given out this story in the village, Mr. Proctor? We had not. They've come to overthrow the court, Your Honor. Peace, Mr. Paris. Mr. Proctor, are you aware that the entire contention of the state in these trials is that the voice of heaven is speaking through the girls? I know that, sir. And you, Mary Warren, how came you to cry out people for sending their spirits against you? It were pretense. I cannot hear you. It were pretense, she says. Ah, and Susanna Walcott and the other girls, they're also all pretending. Aye, sir. Indeed. Your Excellency, surely you are not going to be allowing such vile lie to be spread in open court. Indeed not. But it strike hard upon me that she would dare come before me with such a tale. Now, Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether I shall see you or not, I must tell you this. We burn a hot fire here, sir. It melts down all concealment. I know that, sir. Are you certain in your conscience, mister, that your evidence is the truth? It is. And you will surely see it. And you thought to declare this in open court before the public? With your permission, aye, I would. May we proceed? Yeah. Now, sir, what is your purpose in so doing? Why, I would free my wife. I... Your Excellency... Mr. Cheever. I think it'd be my duty, sir, and you'll not deny it, John. When I come to take his wife, he damned the court and ripped your warrant. Now you have it! He did that, Mr. Hale. Aye, uh, he did. It were a temper, sir. I knew not what I did. Mr. Proctor! Aye, sir. Have you ever seen the devil? I have not. You are in all regards a gospel Christian? I am, Your Excellency. Such a Christian that will not come to church yet once in a month. Not come to church? I have no love for Mr. Paris. That is no secret. But God, I surely love. He plow on Sunday. Plow on Sunday? I think it'd be evidence, John. I'm an official of the court. I cannot keep it. I have once or twice plowed on a Sunday. I have three children, and until last year, my land gave little. You'll find other Christians that do plow on Sunday if the truth be known. Excellency, I cannot think you may judge a man on such evidence. I judge nothing, Mr. Hale. I'll be straight with you, mister. I have seen marvels in this court. I have seen people choked by spirits before my very eyes. I have seen people stuck by pins and slashed by daggers. I have, until this moment, not the slightest reason to believe that the girls may be attempting to deceive me. Do you understand my meaning? Mr. Danforth, does it not strike upon you that so many of these women have lived so long with such an upright reputation? Do you read the gospel, Mr. Proctor? I read the gospel. Then surely you would know that Cain were an upright man, and yet he did kill Abel. Aye. God tells us that. But who tells us Rebecca Nurse murdered seven babies by sending her spirit out on them? It is children only. And this girl will swear they lied to you. Aye. She's the one. Hmm. Mr. Proctor. This morning, your wife sent me a claim in which she states that she is pregnant now. My wife is pregnant? Aye, sir. We have examined her body, yet there be no sign of it. Your Excellency, if my wife says she's pregnant, she must be. She, she will not. cannot lie. She will not? Never, sir. Hmm. We have thought it too convenient to be credited. However, should I tell you that she will be kept another month and begin to show her natural signs, 
She would be living yet another year until she is delivered. What say you to that? Come now, you say your only purpose is to save your wife. Can you drop these charges? I cannot, sir. Then your purpose is somewhat larger. Yes, he's come to overthrow the court, your honor. These are my friends, and their wives are also accused. I judge you not, sir. I am ready to hear your evidence. I come today not to hurt the court. I come only to the say- The pure of heart need no lawyers, Mr. Proctor. Proceed as you will. Will you read this first? It is a testament of sorts. The people signing it declare the good opinion of Rebecca and my wife. Their good opinion? These are members of the church. I would ask you to remember, the people signing it have known these women many years, and never have they seen signs of dealings with Lucifer. Hmm. How many names are here, sir? Ninety-one, Your Excellency. These people should be summoned for questioning. Mr. Danforth, I gave them all my word no harm would come to them for signing this. This is a clear attack upon the courts. Mr. Paris, is every defense an attack upon the courts, sir? These are all covenanted Christians. Then you may be sure that they may have nothing to fear. Mr. Cheever, have warrants drawn for all of these. Arrest for examination. Aye. Mr. Proctor, what other information do you have for us? You may sit, Mr. Nurse. I have brought trouble on these people. No, old I man. Have... You have not brought trouble upon them if they are of good conscience. She's not hearty, I see. No, she's not. Come, man, we wait to you. John, my deposition, give him mine. Aye. This is Mr. Corey's deposition. What lawyer, Judius Corey? You know I never hired a lawyer in my life, Hathorne. It is very well phrased. My compliments. Mr. Paris, if Mr. Putnam is in the court, please bring him in. I know my rights, sir, and I will have them. Indeed, Mr. Corey. Mr. Putnam, I have here a charge against you by Giles Corey. He states that you coldly prompted your daughter to cry witchery upon George Jacobs, who is now in jail. It is a lie. Mr. Putnam states your charge is a lie. What say you? A fart on Thomas Putnam. That is what I say to that. What proof do you submit for your charge, though? My proof is there. But proof, sir. The proof, proof is there. And the name of this man. What name? The man who gave you this information. Well, I cannot give you no name. And why not? You know well why not. This is contempt to the court, Mr. Danforth. You will surely give us the name. I cannot give you no name. I mentioned my wife's name once and I'll burn in hell long enough for that. I stand mute. Mr. Corey, then I have nothing left to do but charge you in contempt of this court. Do you know that? This is a hearing. You can't clap me for contempt of a hearing. Oh, it is a proper lawyer. Do you wish me to declare this court in full session or will you give me good reply? I cannot give you no name, sir. I cannot. You are a foolish old man. Mr. Cheever, begin the record. I ask you again, Mr. Corey. Your Honor. He has the story in confidence. He cannot give up that name. The devil lives with such confidences. Without such confidences, there could be no conspiracy, Your Honor. Must it be broken, Judge Hathorn? Yeah. Mr. Corey, if your informant speak the truth, let him come here openly, like a decent man. But if he hide in anonymity, I must know why. Now, sir, the, sir, the church and central government demand of you the name of him who reported Mr. Thomas Putnam a common murderer. Excellency. Mr. Hale. If we cannot blink it more. There is a prodigious fear of the courts in this country, sir. Reproach me not with the fear in the country. There is fear in the country because there is a prodigious plot to topple Christ in the country. But it does not follow that everyone that come accused is a part of it, sir. No uncorrupted man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. Mr. Corey, you are under arrest and contempt of this court. I'll cut your throat, but I'll kill you yet. He's... Say nothing more, John. He's only playing you. He means to hang us all. He's this child. is a court of law, Mr. Hale. Have no effrontery here. Forgive him, sir, for his old age. Peace. We will prove it all now. In my hands, I hold Mary Warren's deposition. I would ask you all to remember that until two weeks ago, she were just as the other children are today. She screamed. She howled. She swore familiar spirits choked her. We all know this. Aye. She says now that she never saw Satan, nor any spirit, and that her friends are deceiving all of you. Excellency, a moment. I think this goes directly to the heart of the matter. 
surely does. I cannot say if Mr. Proctor is an honest man. I know him little. But a claim so weighty cannot be argued by a farmer. In God's name, sir, stop here. Send him home. Now look you, Mr. Hale. I am a minister of the Lord. I have signed 72 death warrants. I dare not take another life without there be proof. Mr. Hale, you surely do not doubt my justice. This morning I signed away the life of Rebecca Nurse. I'll not conceal it, sir. My hand shakes as were with a wound. I pray you, let lawyers be present. Mr. Hale, for a man of such terrible learning, you are most bewildered. Let you consider then, and I bid you all do the same. In an ordinary crime, how does one defend the accused? One calls up witnesses to prove his innocence. But witchcraft is ipso facto, on its face and by nature, an invisible crime, is it not? Therefore, who may possibly be witness to it? The witch and her victims. None other. Now, we cannot hope the witch to accuse herself, granted. Therefore, we must rely upon her victims, and if they testify, as our children certainly do. But this child claims the other girls are untruthful. That is a precisely what I'm about to consider, Mr. Hale. What more may you ask of me, unless you doubt my probity? I surely do not, sir. So let you consider it, then. Mr. Proctor, her deposition. Aye. Your Excellency, I would like to question... Peace, Mr. Harris. Mr. Cheever, go into the court. Bring the children here. Aye. Mary Warren, how come you to this turnabout? Has Mr. Proctor threatened you for this deposition? No, sir. Has he ever threatened you? No, sir. Has he threatened you? No, sir. Then you mean to tell me that you sat in my court, callously lying, when you knew people would hang for your evidence? I did, sir. How were you instructed in life? Do you not know that God damns all liars, Mary? Or is it now that you lie? No, sir. I'm with God. I'm with God. You're with God now. Aye, sir. Hmm. Mr. Cheever, the children? Aye, sir. Ruth Putnam's not in the court, sir, nor the other children. This will be sufficient. Children, I have here a deposition from your friend, Mary Warren. In this deposition, she claims she never saw any familiar spirits, apparitions, nor any manifest of the devil. She also claims in her deposition that you have seen none of these either. It may very well be that Mary Warren has been conquered by Satan, who sends her here now to distract our sacred purpose. If so, her neck will break for it. But if she speak true, I bid you now drop your guile and confess, for a quick confession will go much easier. Abigail Williams, is there any truth in this? No, sir. Will either of you change your stance, or do you force me to hard questioning? I have not to change, sir. She lies. You would still go on with this? Aye, sir. Hmm. Well, then. A puppet were found in Mr. Proctor's house, stabbed by a needle. In her deposition, Mary Warren claims that she saw you sitting next to her in court, and that you witnessed her create the puppet and stick the needle into it for safekeeping. What say you to that? It is a lie, sir. Abigail. While you worked in Mr. Proctor's house, did you see poppets? Goody Proctor always kept poppets. My wife never kept no poppets, sir. Your Excellency. Mr. Cheever. When I talked to Goody Proctor in the house, she said she never kept no poppets. Mr. Danforth. What may Mary Warren gain in this? What may she profit but hard questioning and worse? Do you know that you charge a marvelous cool plot to murder upon Abigail Williams? I do. I believe she means to murder. This child would murder your wife. It is no child. Aye, now she is solemn and goes to hang people. Quiet, man. You surely have no bearing on this question, sir. Aye. He charges contemplation of murders. Once again, aye. Continue, Mr. Proctor. Mary, now you will tell the governor how you danced about in the woods. Excellency, ever since I arrived in Salem, this man has been blackening my name in the village. In a moment, sir. What of this dancing? I, Mr. Mr. Abigail leads them into the woods, Your Excellency, and they have danced there naked. Mr. Paris. Mr. Paris himself discovered them the dead of night. There's your child, she is. Mr. Paris. Aye, sir. It's true, but 
I never saw any of them naked. But you did find them dancing in the woods, Abigail. Aye, sir. Excellency, when I arrived for Beverly, Mr. Paris did tell me that. Will you deny it, Mr. Paris? No, sir, but I never saw any of them naked. But you did see her dance. Aye. Excellency, will you permit me? Pray, proceed. You say you never saw no spirits, Mary. You have never been threatened or afflicted by any manifest of devils or devil's agents. No. And yet, when people accused you of confronting you to the court, you would faint, seeing their spirits coming out of their bodies and choked you. It were pretense. I cannot hear you. Pretense, sir. But you did turn cold, did you not? I myself picked you up many times and your skin were like ice. Mr. Danforth, I think. Aye. I they were all pretending. They're all marvelous pretenders. Then can she pretend to faint now? Now? Why not? There are no attacking spirits here and none else in this room is accused of witchcraft. So let her turn cold now. Let her pretend she's attacked now. Let her faint. Faint! Faint? Aye. Prove to us how you fainted so many times in the court before. I cannot faint now. Can you not pretend it? I have no sense of it. Why? What is lacking now? I cannot tell it, sir. Might it be that we have no attacking spirits here, but in the court there were some? I never saw no spirits. Then prove to us how you can faint by your own will as you claim. I cannot do it. So you confess. It were attacking spirits made you faint. No, sir. Your Excellency, this is a trick to blind the court. It's not a trick. I used to faint because I thought I saw spirits. Thought you saw spirits. But I did not, Your Honor. How could you think you saw them, unless you saw them? All the other girls are screaming and you seem to believe them, so I... Surely Your Excellency is not to be blinded by this simple lie. Abigail Williams, I bid you search your heart and tell me this. Is it possible, child, that the spirits you have seen are illusion only, some deception that Why, may this, cross them? This is a base question, sir. Child, I would have you consider it. The possibility- I have been hurt, Mr. Danforth. I have seen my blood running out. I have been near to murdered every day because I've done the Lord's work pointing out the devil's people. And this is how you ma do you reward me? To be mistrusted, denied, questioned Child, like I do not mistrust you. Let you beware, Mr. Danforth. Think you to be so mighty that the power of hell may have turned your wits? Beware of it. There is. What is it, child? I know not. A wind. A cold wind has come. A Abby, your honor, I freeze. They're lying, your honor. Mary, do you send this shadow on me? Lord, save me. I freeze, I freeze. It is a wind, a wind. Abby, don't do that. Mary Warren, do you witch her? I say again, do you send your spirit out? Let me go, Mr. Broder, let me go. Oh, Heavenly Father, take away this shadow. How do you call heaven? Ah, ah, John. Oh, man, what do you do? It is a whore. You charge that she's a whore? It is a lie. Mark her. Now she may suck a scream out to stab me with. This will not pass. You will prove this. I have known her. You are a lecher? John, you cannot say such a- In what time? In what place? In the proper place where my beasts are bedded. On the last night of my joy, some eight months passed. She used to serve me in my house. A man may think God sleeps, but God sees all. She wishes to dance with me on my wife's grave. And well she might, for I thought her softly. But now it is a whore's vengeance, your honor, and you must see it. <laughs> Abigail Williams, do you deny every scrap of this? If I must answer that, I will leave this court and never come back. Your honor, my wife is innocent except she knew a whore when she saw one. What looks do you give me? I'll not have such looks! You will stay where you are! Mr. Paris, bring good wife Proctor into the court. Your Honor. Bring her into the court! And bid you not tell a word of what's been said here. Knock before you enter. Now we will touch the bottom of this swamp. Turn your back. Do likewise. None of you will speak to good wife Proctor. None of you will turn to face her. No one in this room shall raise a single gesture, I or nay. You understand? Uh. Mr. Cheever, report this testimony in all exactness. 
You may enter. Good wife Proctor, come here. You are to look only at me and not at your husband. Do you understand? Good, sir. We are given to understand that at one time you dismissed your servant, Abigail Williams. That is true, sir. For what cause did you dismiss her? Look at me. She dissatisfied dis me, sir. In what way dissatisfied you? You will look she at me when I'm talking to you. Was she slovenly? Lazy? What disturbance did she cause? Your Honor, in, in that time I was sick and my husband is a goodly and righteous man, sir, but in my sickness you see I were very sick with my last baby and I thought I saw him turning from me somewhat and, and this girl... Look at me! Hi, sir, Abigail Williams. What of Abigail Williams? I came to think he fancied her. Did your husband indeed turn from you? My husband is a goodly man, sir. And he did not turn from you? He, uh, he did... Woman, look at me! To your knowledge, has your husband committed the crime of lechery? Answer me, is your husband a lecher? No, sir! Marshal, remove her. Elizabeth, tell the truth! She has spoken, remove her! Elizabeth, I have confessed! Oh, God! She thought only to spare my name. Excellency, it is a natural lie to tell. I beg you, stop here before another is condemned. He has spoken nothing of lechery, and this man has lied. But I believe him. This girl, this girl has always struck me false. She has always... <laughs> What is it, child? You will not be gone! Child, be what? Be gone! Girls, what do you point it's at? It's on the beam behind the rafter! Where? Why? Why do you come, yellow bird? Where's a bird? I see no bird. My face! My face! Mr. Hale! Quiet! Do you see a bird? I no. say quiet! But God made my face. You cannot want to tear my face. Envy is a deadly sin, Mary. Abby. Mary Warren, draw back your spirit out of them. Abby, I'm here. No. No, I cannot shut my mouth. It's God's work I do. This is a black art to change your shape, Mary. The, the pretending, Your Honor. I'm not hurting her. Why does she see this vision? She sees nothing. She sees nothing. Abby, you mustn't. Abby, Abby you, you mustn't. mustn't. I'm here, I'm here. I'm, I'm here, I'm here. here. Mr. Danforth. Mr. Danforth. Danforth. You've compacted with the devil, have you not? Mr. Danforth. Mr. Danforth. You have seen Lucifer. You have made compact with the devil, yes? Never, never. Never, never. Why can she only repeat you? They're sporting. They're, they're sporting. sporting. Abby, stop it. Abby, Abby stop, stop it. it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. A little bit ago, you were afflicted. Now it seems you afflict others. Where have you found this power? They're calling you, mister. I, I have no power. I have, I have no, no power. power. Can you not see they are pretending, Excellency? I, I, no. What are you saying? No. I cannot hear you. No. You will confess yourself or you will hang Mary Warren. Mary, no. God damns all liars. No. You have seen the devil. You have compacted with Lucifer, have you not? God damns liars, Mary. Will you speak? I cannot. Mary, remember the angel Raphael. Do that which is good. No, Mary, don't come down. In her claws, she's stretching out her claws. Fly, fly! Excellency, she's there is nothing there. Ah! Don't touch me, don't touch me, Mr. Proctor. You're the devil's man. Mary, how can you say that? I'm not hang with you no more. I love God, I love God. He bid you do the devil's work? Oh, sir. To sign. He come to me every night and day. To sign. Sign what? He wants my name. He says I'll murder, murder you if my wife hangs. Mr. Hale. No such thing. I love God. I love God. I bless God. I bless God. Abby. Abby. Mary. This child has no gone more. wild, Excellency. <laughs> Do you dare? What are you? You're combined with Antichrist, are you not? I've seen your power, and there will be no denying it. What say you? Excellency, I will have nothing from you, Mr. Hale. <laughs> Mister, will you confess yourself befouled with hell? What say you? I say... I say... I say God is dead! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
There is a prodigious stench in this place. Excellency, I wonder it is wise to let Mr. Paris so continuously with the prisoners. I think sometimes the man have a mad look these days. Mad? I met him yesterday coming out of his house, and I bid him good morning. But he wiped and went his ways. I think it's not well the villagers think him so unsteady. Hmm. <laughs> Excellency, good morning. Mr. Hale has no right to- Excellency, a moment. Reverend Hale has returned to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. He bids her confess? No, no, not yet. But I thought it might be wise to inform you that- <laughs> Excellency, there's something I've been meaning to tell you that- Mr. Paris, speak plainly. What troubles you? My niece has vanished. Vanished! I- Vanished. Why? How long is she gone? This be the third night. She told me she would be staying at Mercy Lewis's house. But the next day when she doesn't return, I go to Mr. Lewis to inquire. They're both gone? I have to go. Aye. Excellency, I think they be aboard a ship. Yeah. My daughter hears them talking of such things, and when I awoke that night, my... <laughs> she have robbed you. My strong box had been broken into. Thirty-one pounds is gone. I am penniless. Mr. Paris, you're a brainless man. Excellency, I would postpone these hangings for a time. There will be no postponement. Mr. Cheever, the list. <laughs> Excellency, it should be noted that only thirty had been present for John Proctor's excommunication. There will be no postponement. Now, Mr. Paris. On this list, these men are condemned to hang. Which of these may be brought before God, as I will strive with him myself until dawn? There is not sufficient time until dawn. I shall do my utmost. Ah, Reverend Hale, please accept my congratulations. We are glad to see you return to your good work. You must pardon them. They will not budge. You mistake me, Mr. Hale. I cannot pardon seven when twelve are already hanged for the same crime. It is not just. There's a few minutes until sunrise. I must have more time. <sighs> Listen to me and beguile yourselves no more. I will not have a single plea for pardon or postponement. Those that will not confess will hang. I have a list here. Seven names of whom will be hanged. These will be presented to the people who wait at the scaffold. Now, gentlemen, I cannot pardon, as it now presents a flounder on my part. Gentlemen, bring yourselves up. Draw yourselves up and help me as you are bound by heaven to do. Mr. Hale, have you spoken with all of them? All but Proctor, sir. He is still in the dungeon. Hmm. His, his wife must be uh, well on with child by now. She is, sir. Mr. Paris, what think you of this? You have more knowledge of this man. Might his wife's presence soften him? It is possible, sir. I should get her. Hmm. And what about Mr. Proctor? Has he struck at you? He cannot, sir. He is chained to the wall now. Hmm. Fetch good wife Proctor for me. Aye, sir. Excellency, if you postpone this a week and publish to the town you are striving for confession, it shows mercy on your part, not faltering. <sighs> Reverend Hale, have you preached in Andover yet this month? Thank God they have no need of me in Andover. <laughs> Mr. Hale, you baffle me. Why have you returned here? Why, it is simple. There is blood on my hands, as well as your own. Can you not see the blood? Ah, good wife Proctor. You are hardy, yes? Six months before my time, sir. Hmm. Fear not, we have not come for your life. We have instead... <sighs> Mr. Hale, will you speak with the woman? Aye. Come, goody Proctor. Goody Proctor. Your husband is marked to hang this morning. I have heard it. You know, do you not, that I have no connection with the court. I come on my own, for I would save your husband's life. For if he is taken, I count myself his murderer. Do you understand? What do you want of me, sir? 
I have this three month like our Lord taken to the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way. For damnations doubled on a minister that counsels men to lie. Let you not mistake your duty as I mistook my own. Life, woman, life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. I beg you, prevail upon your husband to confess. Let him give his lie. I think that be the devil's argument, sir. Good wife Proctor, you have not been summoned here for disputation. Be there no wifely tenderness in you? Your husband will hang the sunrise. Your husband! Will you contend with him? Are you stone? Let me speak with him, Excellency. You'll strive with him? Will you plead his confession? I promise nothing. Just let me speak with him. Pray, Excellency, leave them alone. Mr. Proctor, you have been informed, have you not? There is light in the sky, mister. Go, take counsel with your wife, and may God help you turn your back on hell. Excellency, let... The child. It grows. There's no news of the boys. They're well. But you have not seen them. I have not. You are a marvel, Elizabeth. You have been tortured? Aye. They come for my life now. I know it. None have yet confessed. There be many confessed. Who are they? Goody Ballard is one, Isaiah Goodkind another, there be many. And Rebecca? Not Rebecca. She hath one foot in heaven now. And Giles? You have not heard of it? I hear nothing where I am kept. Giles is dead, John. When did he hang? He did not hang. Then how does he die? They press him. Press? Great stones they lay upon his chest until he plead aye or nay. He give them but two words. More weight, he says, and died. More weight? Aye, tis a fearsome man, Giles Corey. I've been thinking I would confess to them. What say you if I give them that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? As you will, I would have it. I want you living, that sure. Giles' wife, have she yet confessed? She will not. It is pretense, Elizabeth. What is? I cannot mount the gibbet like a saint. It is a fraud. I am not that man. And yet you've not confessed till now that speak goodness in you. Spite only keeps me silent. It is hard to give a lie to dogs. I would have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. It come not to me that I should forgive you, John, if you'll not forgive yourself. I'll have you see some honesty in it. Only know this now, for I know it. Whatever you will do, it is a good man that just... Enough, doctor. enough. Better you should know me. I'll not hear it. You take your sins upon me, John. No! I... No, I take my own. John, I counted myself so plain, so poorly made, no honest love could come to me. Suspicion kissed you when I did. I never knew how I should say my love. It were a cold house I kept. John is so up. Do what you will, John, but let none be your judge. I... Uh, I want my life. You will confess yourself? I will have my life. God be praised! God be praised! Praise! Proctor will confess! All in the building! Proctor will confess! He will confess! I cannot judge you, John. I cannot. Then who will judge me? God in heaven, what is John Proctor? What is John Proctor? I am not your judge. I am only your wife. What would you say? Say it. What would you do? I cannot. I cannot. Be to God, praise be to God. Sir, you will be blessed in heaven for this. Mr. Cheever, are you ready? Aye, sir. Now, 
Why must it be written? Why, for the good instruction of the village, of course. It will be posted to the church door. Now, Mr. Proctor, will you speak slowly and to the point for Mr. Cheever's sake? I ask of you now, did you ever see the devil? I, I did. And when he come to you, what were his demands? Come, did he bid you do his work upon the earth? He, he did. Please, come in, come in. Goody nurse. Uh, John, you are well then. Come, man, give us courage. Did he bid you do his services upon the earth? Why, John. He did. Now, you can surely see it, goody nurse. There be no need to continue this conspiracy any longer. Will you confess with John Proctor? Oh, John, God sent his mercy unto you. I say to you, will you confess? Why, it is a lie. It is a lie. How well may I damn myself? I cannot. I cannot. Mr. Proctor, <laughs> when the devil came to you in his company, were goody nurse there? No, sir. Were his sister Mary Eatsy there? She was not, sir. Did you see Martha Corey with the devil? No, sir. Did you see anyone with the devil? I did not. Mr. Proctor, you misunderstand me. I will not trade your life for a lie. Then it is proved. Why must I say it? Sir, it matters not what she thinks. She is convicted of the unnatural murder of children, and you convicted for sending your spirit on Mary Warren. Now I ask you again, <laughs> did you see good wife nurse? I speak my own sins. I cannot judge another. Excellency, it is enough he confess. Let him sign the document, sir. I Please. beg you, let him sign it. The sun is almost up, your excellency. Come then, sign it. Sign your deposition, Proctor. You have all witnessed it. It is enough. You will sign the document or it is no proper confession. Now come. Praise be to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mr. Proctor, the document. No, 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 no. Man, Mr. Proctor, doing? I must have the document. I have confessed. Proctor. It is enough. Damn the village. Damn this. I confess to God. Mr. Proctor, you have not yet confessed. I have confessed. Sir, it is not enough. It I'm is enough. I am no Sarah Good. I am no Tichu, but I am John Proctor. Mr. Proctor, I do not accuse you of being someone you are not. I have three children. How may I teach them to walk like men in this world when I have sold my friends? You have not sold your friends. Beguile me not. <sighs> Mr. Proctor, I must have good and legal proof that you have... You are the high court of this land. Your word is good enough. Say what you will, but my name cannot be tarnished. Mr. Proctor, it is the same, is it not? Whether I reply no. you sign... No, it is not the same. What others say and what I sign is not the same. Do you mean to deny this confession when you are free? I, I mean to deny nothing. Then tell me, why will you not sign it? Because it is my name! Because I cannot have another in this life. Because I lie and I sign myself to lies. I have given you my soul, just please leave me my name! Mr. Proctor, is this document a lie? As I will not accept it if it is one. Marshal! Proctor! Oh, God, Proctor! Please. Man, you cannot! I you can. will hang! I God, can! Please. And that is your first level that I can! God, <laughs> please. You have made your magic now! 
<laughs> or I saw no. a shred of goodness in John Proctor. Let you fear nothing. <laughs> Another judgment waits us all. Hang them high above the town. No. Any who weep for no. these, weep for corruption. No. What are you doing? <laughs> Goody Proctor, you must go to him. <laughs> Goody Proctor, please. No. Proctor! Proctor! <laughs> Woman, plead with him. What profit for him to believe? <laughs> He hath his goodness now. God forbid I take it from him. Proctor! We did the no. Let's see. The devil's up. Oh, my God.